How would you go about using an art program to plan a color scheme for a gaming miniature? It's actually kind of easy. I'll show you how it's done. So recently, I've fallen hard back into painting gaming miniatures. You've probably seen them somewhere before. The most common gaming miniatures are probably Warhammer 40k, but with the recent popularity of Dungeons and Dragons, you might have seen some pop up in D&D games as well. I started painting way back in college, but after a very long hiatus, I've been back at it for the past year or so, and I am loving the hobby and the mini painting community that comes with it. I'll probably dive a little deeper into the whole mini painting part of things in a later video, but this one I want to talk about color schemes. A lot of folks like me like to plan out a color scheme for their miniature models before sitting down to paint. There's a few tutorials out there showing you how to do it with simple programs like Microsoft Paint or even Microsoft PowerPoint, but if you'd like to use a digital art program to make a nicer looking scheme without a ton of extra work, this video might be what you're looking for. There are some pretty amazing free art programs out there, and I recently made a video that explains a few great ones. Out of the ones I talk about in that video, you could easily use Fire Alpaca or Krita for this process. I'll link them in the description. You could also use the third option I talk about, My Paint, although it might be a little bit trickier. Whatever program you're using, here are some of the things your program should have. You should have the ability to use and adjust different paint layers. You should have some form of pen or paintbrush tool for coloring in. You should maybe have a lasso selection tool, preferably the polygonal variety if you're not using a tablet to draw. You should have an undo tool for when you make mistakes, which most art programs have these days. You should have a color wheel of some sort and some sort of eyedropper tool to easily pick up colors that you want to paint with. And ideally, you want some basic adjustment tools like brightness, contrast, saturation, that kind of thing. First of all, if the program you're using is new to you, I highly suggest taking some time and just playing around in it before you really dive into what I talk about in this video. Try out different tools, get familiar with where things are, and just have a bit of fun. You can use a creative drawing tablet or a mouse for this process. A tablet will be more precise and faster because you can just draw with your hand, but a mouse will easily do the trick with a lasso tool and a bit of practice. So today I'll be deciding on a color scheme for a warband from the game God Tier by Steamforge Games. We backed their Kickstarter a while back and I found myself with 15 God Tier warbands to paint up. With three to five models per warband, that's a lot of minis. So far, I've completed seven of the warbands, and I have eight more to go. If you haven't heard of God Tier, I highly suggest looking it up. It's a really fun two-player skirmish tabletop game. They're not sponsoring this video, I just really dig the game, and all the minis are really well designed, and I find them really easy and fun to paint. The next warband on my list to paint is the champion Titus the Disgraced, his five glory seekers, and a banner flag. Titus is one of two champions in God Tier's Borderlands starter set. First things first, I need to find a good image of the group to serve as the base for my color scheme. Ideally, you'll find an image that's a pretty good resolution that features front views of your unpainted minis. If you can find a back view as well and want to do both at once, that's a bonus. I had trouble finding a good image online of Titus and the gang, so this time, I took a photo with my cell phone of the crew on the game box and then I converted it to grayscale and that's what I'm working with in this video. So before you start coloring, it's a good idea to make sure that your image looks bright and sharp so that the colors come through as clearly as possible. First thing I did was crop my image a little bit so that it was easier to work with. Then I used the adjustment tools in my art program to sharpen the image just a little bit and then I played with the brightness and contrast tools in order to make sure that I had nice bright and dark spots without any parts of the image getting washed out too bright, too dark. You may not have to do this at all, depending on what image you're working with, but it's a good idea to make sure you have a nice high contrast like I'm showing you here. Once you're happy with your results, the next step is to essentially turn the image into a coloring page. First thing you wanna do is to make a new adjustment layer under your first one. This is gonna be your color layer. If you're not entirely sure how to do this, get familiar with how layers work in your art program. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. 
Once your color layer is created, you're gonna to wanna to set that first layer, the layer that has the photo of the models on it, to multiply. Multiply is a layer adjustment selection that is under a little drop down usually in your layer window in your art program. If the top layer is locked, as some art programs like to do, you can either just unlock it by hitting the padlock button or just make a copy of the layer and then delete the original locked one. Once you've converted the original model layer to multiply, try painting some color on the color layer. Voila! Now you can color underneath the model and have it show through just like a coloring page. Pretty cool, right? So at this point, you can go ahead and just start playing around with your color scheme ideas if you like. An optional step, and one that I do every time, is to fill in the models with a solid color first and then lock the transparency on that layer so you can color within the lines. I'll show you what I'm talking about. What I do first is pick out a nice bright solid color, something that makes it really easy for me to see where the color is being laid down. And I start filling in the models on the color layer. Use your tablet and drawing pen if you have one, and if not, you can use a polygonal lasso tool to do a section at a time. This method takes just a little bit of practice, but it goes pretty quickly once you get the hang of it and makes using a mouse really easy. Some people find this filling in and locking transparency step kind of tedious and prefer to skip it. That's totally fine. Personally, I find this step a little relaxing for some reason, and it helps me get a feel for the details of each model as I fill in the color. Once you've got all your models filled in with that bright color, you're gonna wanna lock the transparency on your color layer. Usually in most art programs, it looks like a little checkered board button in your layer window, but it can differ depending on the program. If you're not sure, Google's your friend. Once you have that done, you can color without worrying about going outside the edges, which for me makes things way easier and makes this slightly tedious step 100% worth it. All right, the hard part's over. Finally, we're getting into the land of choosing our colors. There are a lot of ways to decide on a color palette for a gaming miniature or a gaming warband. You can gather reference images of concept art from the game you're going to play. You can gather existing paint jobs by other artists. You can use color palettes online. You can just wing it until you have something you're happy with. Honestly, I typically use a little bit of a combination and just use whatever works for you. The kind of reference images you might gather can depend on your goals for your minis. Maybe you want your scheme to match your concept art for your game, or you have a base color in mind for your entire army. Uh, in my case, with all the god tier sets, I've been referring to a mix of concept art, as well as existing paint jobs by other very talented painters. And from there, I create a color scheme and usually put a unique spin on it for my own sets. I'll usually put my reference images in a sidebar in my art program or throw them up on one of my secondary monitors so that they're right there to refer to while I'm playing around with my color scheme ideas. Something a lot of folks do, especially if they have a full set of paints from a specific brand, is they'll pull up the digital palette for that brand of paint from the paint brand's website, or maybe somebody has made a palette, and they'll have it on hand while they figure out their color scheme. In my case, I only own about 40 or 50 paints total, and they're from all kinds of different brands of mini painting paint. Uh, I do a lot of paint mixing when I'm working on my minis, so in my case, I just pick colors I like and worry about the mixing later. Do what works best for you. So you've got your photo, you might have gotten your solid color transparency locked, you've got your color scheme picked out. Now that you've got colors in mind, your image is prepped, let's finally color, right? This process can differ person to person. What follows is how I usually do things, but honestly, just have fun with this step in whatever way works for you. You're coloring. Coloring is fun. Have fun. Once I have a draft palette ready to go, I take one of the colors and paint over the whole image on the color layer just to get rid of that bright color from the earlier step. Usually I'll pick a skin tone for this, but since all of Titus's crew is going to have different skin colors, I used gray this time, so I'm printing them right back to looking like unpainted minis for the time being. And now I just start playing around. I start by filling in any initial ideas I had in mind for the color scheme. And I usually start from the inside out, starting with the skin, then moving out to the different clothing. Sometimes I'll lighten or darken colors by a shade or adjust or change colors as I go. Sometimes I'll try entirely new colors. And sometimes I stick pretty close to the scheme. It just depends on the models. 
Sometimes I'll keep a color wheel handy just to reference that I'm not picking colors that are too close to one another, which can be aesthetically unpleasing to the eye. This is some basic color theory stuff that I won't really get into, but there's a million color theory tutorials out there and it's worth learning a little bit about color theory if you're getting into any kind of art or painting. For example, I don't show it in this video, but the red and blue that I concepted in the first iteration of this piece a while ago were a very primary red and a very primary blue, and they clashed. When I changed the shades to be closer to a burnt orange red and a deep teal blue, the colors complemented each other much more pleasingly. So while you watch me sort out the color palette for Titus and the gang here, I want to do a quick shout out to the Goobertown Hobbies Discord community because they inspired this video. Goobertown Hobbies is a YouTube channel about mini painting and some other fun hobby stuff that's run by a real cool dude named Brent. Brent's beginner mini painting video was instrumental in helping me get back to the hobby after a very long hiatus. And since then, I started supporting him on Patreon. His Patreon Discord community is chock full of awesome chill hobbyists just like me and hanging out there really lit a fire under me to kickstart my YouTube channel again. There were a lot of requests from those folks to make a video about how I do my color schemes because I've shared quite a few of them on the channel while working on the minis for God tier. I'll link Brent's Goobertown Hobbies channel in the description below. If you're interested in mini painting and don't really know where to start, or if you just like watching chill mini painting videos, Goobertown is the place to be. Much like a certain other soft-spoken painter out there, Brent's got lots of great tips for enjoying painting, combined with awesome hair and a great, relaxing voice. Go check him out and subscribe. Anyhow, back to the color scheme. Once I have colors all picked out in the way that I like, I'll smooth out the colors so they look nice and even add some highlights to make it really pop. Highlighting is absolutely not required, but as a digital artist, I just really like the finished product to look nice, so I put that extra effort in. With that, I think I'm done. I've landed on a concept that I really like, and I think I'm going to run with this for the painting. My last step is to save my file as an easy to open image like JPEG or PNG and put it on a cloud somewhere so that I can pull it up on my laptop while I'm painting. Since recording this tutorial, I've actually finished painting Titus and the Glory Seekers, and I'm pleased to say they turned out pretty good. I made a few small changes from the original color scheme, which is pretty common but overall it stayed pretty true to the scheme I had in mind. I'm really happy with the outcome and I can't wait to get him back on the table with some of the other God tier warbands to try and claim immortality and ultimate power. To finish off today, here are a few more of the concepts and finished products I've made for the God tier warbands that I've painted thus far. I don't make a color scheme for every mini I paint, but thus far I've been doing them for all of the God tier sets because these are table ready minis and I want them to look really nice for the long term. For the most part, I find it really fun to just sit down with paint and just wing it. Do what's right for you and whatever situation you're painting for. Maybe it's just because I'm a professional digital artist, but I really enjoy the color scheme step. It helps me slow down, get to know my models before I ever start painting them and carefully plan a scheme that I can then sit down and paint. As you can see from my examples here, some of my final results have been closer than others, and that's okay. Sometimes a great idea comes up midway through painting and I just have to run with it. So far I've been delighted with the results every time. And that's it. That's how I design color schemes for my gaming miniatures. It's definitely more involved than some of the other methods that are out there, but I like it. I like the clean finished look and it's a great excuse to practice dipping your toes into some new digital art programs and learn a new skill. If you want to see more videos about mini painting, let me know. I don't currently have a recording setup for mini painting, but maybe that'll change. I welcome suggestions in general for future videos and invite you to like and subscribe so you can see my future content. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.